Now, I know a lot of people might be triggered just reading the title of this video, so I'm going to start off by saying that I in no way dislike The Order of the Phoenix book. I actually love this book, but out of the seven in the series, I enjoyed this one the least, and in this video, I'm going to explain why I think that is. On top of that, I feel I have to say that it's okay if you disagree with me. Everyone has their own opinion. I've talked about the book being my least favorite in several videos, and every time I say it, there's at least one person in the comment section saying it's actually their favorite, which is honestly amazing because there's so many Harry Potter fans out there, and everyone looks at these books differently. It really shows how vast the Harry Potter fandom is, and how much the series means to us, everyone having their own opinion on every little thing. So now that that's said, I'm going to break down why I personally enjoyed this book the least out of the seven in the series. Because as I said, I've mentioned this in several videos, and I've gotten so many people asking why I think that, and the time has finally come for me to say why that is. Now obviously there are going to be major spoilers for this book and the rest of the series, so there's your warning. Also, I know this is a book review, but I'm going to use clips from the movies because I think it will just make the video more pleasing for you guys to watch. Before we start, I just wanted to say that I'm going to stop using the YouTube community tab as much as I have been and start using other platforms more so that the Movie Flame brand extends past just YouTube just in case the worst happened and I lost the channel or something. So make sure you follow me on Twitter, which is the most important because that will sort of replace the YouTube community tab. I'll be posting the most updates there and that's linked down below. You can also follow us on Facebook, and if you want, you can follow my personal Instagram as well, which is full of cute dogs, behind the scenes movie flame stuff, and some fun Harry Potter posts. Both of those are linked down below as well. Now, let's get started. This is it. So as I said, I don't dislike this book. I actually like it a lot, but I'm not here to talk about why this book is good. I'm here to talk about the flaws I see in it. I've gone through the Harry Potter series too many times to count, and every single time I do, I get stuck on this book. I don't know what it is, but I fly through the rest in the series, but this one just always leaves me wanting to stop reading or listening to the audiobooks and give up. As a lot of you know, I'm going through the series right now for my Harry Potter film video essays, and once again, I got stuck on this book. Honestly, the only reason I finished it this time around was because I knew I was making this video and had to write the script, and I actually announced this video just to force myself to finish the book. Brilliant. One of the biggest flaws this novel has is the pacing. JK Rowling herself said that she regretted adding as much as she did to this book, saying it was too beefy and too long. She wished that she had shortened it and cut some things out that were unnecessary, and I have to agree with her. This book is by far the longest in the series, and there's a lot of fluff that could have been cut, especially in the beginning of the book. I feel like the first two chapters, Dudley Demented and A Peck of Owls, could have been condensed into one chapter and have the same effect, and maybe even be better. The first chapter in a book is the most important one because it's what draws the audience in. I think the novel would have been much better if it started off the way the movie did, with Harry all alone. In the book, however, it started off with Harry listening to the news and eavesdropping on his aunt and uncle, then getting into a fight with his aunt and uncle, and then he finally goes off on his own. I think the book would have benefited greatly if it had just cut all of that out and had it start with Harry by himself. And as Harry was alone, JK could have caught us up through Harry's thoughts, talking about how everyone was leaving him in the dark all summer. Also, by having Harry be alone, it would have highlighted his loneliness even more. Rowling could have cut so much of the first chapter down, and by just removing one more thing, it could have cut the chapter in half, and that is cutting Dudley's friends out, and just have it be Harry and Dudley who then get attacked by the Dementors. Then, the second half of the chapter could have been the outpost scene where he gets expelled. We have an entire chapter dedicated to just letter after letter, and one of the reasons why I think Rowling added this was because it worked so well in the third book in the chapter called Outpost. But the difference between these two chapters is that in the third book, Outpost was the very first chapter, and she used the letters as a way of catching us up on Harry's life. But in the fifth book, this doesn't work, because it was put in a place where the action had long since started, an entire Dementor attack taking place, and many conversations and fights had taken place as well. So the focus on the letters sort of slows the action and excitement down. Had they combined Sirius and Arthur's letters, which basically said the same thing, and combined the two Ministry letters into one, they could have saved so much time and combined the Dementor attack and the letters in the same chapter. By driving the excitement from the Dementor attack into the Howler and making all of this happen in the first chapter would have made for one of the most exciting openings in any of the Harry Potter books and gotten the reader super engaged in the span of one chapter and in the most important chapter. And going off of that, this book takes forever to start the actual plot. We don't get to Hogwarts until halfway through chapter 10. This opening alone before we get to Hogwarts is more than half of the book in the first series, which is 17 chapters. And that book had the task of setting up the entire Wizarding World for the readers. 
The fifth book drags on in Grimmauld Place with them cleaning up the house, which I think is so boring. And the whole point of them cleaning was to set up them finding the Horcrux. But why would you spend so much time setting something like that up? You could have just had them find it and explained how they found it in one page. Especially because we're not even told what the locket was here. We're not told that until two books later. There are literally two chapters dedicated and named to focus on this grimy old house. And me personally, I don't want to see this. I want to see my fictional home. The thing that's all Harry Potter fans' second home. I want to see Hogwarts. And at the very least, I want to see them doing something besides cleaning a house. Rowling could have easily cut so much from the beginning of the book and just highlighted the important things we needed to see, like the Black Family Tree, Harry's introduction to the Order of the Phoenix, and of course the Ministry of Magic. But all of this could have been done in two or three chapters. There are just so many unnecessary details that add nothing to the story, and it really makes the book drag on. If you look at other books in the series, specifically my favorite book, The Half-Blood Prince, it's the same amount of story, and maybe even more than The Order of the Phoenix, but it's significantly shorter because the pacing is really well done, and this keeps the reader engaged without boring them with unnecessary details. Another thing that really bothered me was the way Sirius acted in this book. Now, I know I can't say that this isn't how Sirius should be, because JK Rowling knows every little detail about all of her characters. For me to say that Sirius doesn't act like Sirius in this novel might come off as me being automatically wrong, but I'm going to explain. Sirius Black was introduced in The Prisoner of Azkaban, and here, while he was on the run and the most wanted man alive, he put his entire life at risk to get Harry a new broomstick after his old one broke. And to do this, he had to take steps that could have easily revealed his location, especially if someone realized that the money was coming out of his vault and then shipping to Hogwarts. He also risked his identity by stepping onto the Hogwarts grounds to watch Harry fly in his Quidditch match, and at the time, the grounds were flooded with pretty much the whole school, and he knew that Lupin was working there, and that Lupin knew his Animagus form. In the Goblet of Fire, after finding out that Harry was in the Triwizard Tournament, Sirius once again risked being captured as he traveled halfway around the world to make it back to Hogwarts so he could protect Harry. Clearly, he would have gone to any length to protect and be with Harry. But now, let's look at the Order of the Phoenix. When the two are finally reunited after many months, Sirius barely acknowledges Harry, instead screaming at his mother's painting, telling her to shut up, then says very grimly, not excited, grimly, Hello Harry, I see you've met my mother. They then discuss his mother and his family, a very anticlimactic reunion. This is one of those things that I said happens so much in the Order of the Phoenix movie, where I find myself liking the film version better than the book. In the film, the reunion is touching and puts a smile on your face, but here, Sirius is just so dull and not at all happy to see Harry, which seems out of character based on the examples I just gave from the other books, where clearly Sirius was going to any length to make Harry happy with the broomstick, and doing anything he could to protect and be with Harry, traveling all the way back to Hogwarts, and while there, he lived in the mountains in Hogsmeade and lived on rats. Shortly after this, they discuss Harry's lousy summer and the Dementor attack, a very scary and traumatic incident for Harry, and Sirius shows no sympathy for his godson. When Harry tells him his summer was lousy, hoping for some comfort, Sirius tells him that he doesn't know what he was complaining about, as he would have welcomed a Dementor attack. He then completely dismisses Harry's problems, and whines about how his problems are worse, as he isn't allowed to step outside. He's comparing a Dementor attack that almost made Harry and Dudley get their souls sucked out, to him not being allowed to go outside. Comparing how Harry was alone all summer, left in the dark by his closest friends, to how he can't leave the house, but meanwhile is surrounded by those closest to him. I know this is hard for Sirius, as he always wants to be in the action, but he shows no sympathy at all for his godson, and Hermione had it right when she said that Sirius was selfish, something that is quite the opposite in the last two books, especially when it came to Harry. Now let's look at one scene in the movie versus the book. In the movie, I'm discussing the scene where Sirius talks to Harry after his dream where he was the snake, and after Harry says that he thinks he's a bad person, Sirius tells him that he's not a bad person, but a good person that bad things have happened to. This in turn calms Harry down and makes him feel better, and Sirius hugs him, saying that they were family. Comparing the same conversation in the book, Sirius just disregards everything Harry says, telling him that he needed sleep, that it was just a dream, and that his anger meant nothing, and finished by telling him to stop worrying. He's no help to Harry whatsoever, and in turn makes Harry struggle worse. Sirius could have literally calmed him down so easily as he did in the movie, but instead he's once again selfish and just disregards Harry. 
In another instance, Sirius goes on to literally scream at Harry when he asks a simple question about his family, something that takes Harry aback and should take the audience aback because this is not the Sirius we're used to. I know there are logical reasons why he's grumpy and angry all the time and it didn't just come out of nowhere, but at the same time, I wish Rowling would have taken a different approach with his character, especially because he ends up dying at the end of the book and all we remember is him being a jerk to Harry, being insensitive, and him whining all the time. It's not that his death isn't powerful, but I think it would have been more powerful if we had grown to love him more in this book rather than grow to dislike him, or how I should say it, dislike the way he's acting. I think his death in the movie is far better because they did just that. They made us fall in love with Sirius more, and therefore, it was more gut-wrenching when he faded away. One of the worst things in the entire Harry Potter series is SPEW, Hermione's organization to help house elves when in reality, they don't want to be helped. It was formed in Gobble to Fire, and it was very annoying there, but it was bearable. However, it gets so much worse in the Order of the Phoenix. Every night, Hermione knits and puts clothes out for the house elves, hoping that when they clean the common room, they pick it up and are set free. Because if they are given clothing, they're set free, as we saw with Davi. There are just so many problems with this. If the elves did pick them up, the school would kind of be screwed, because they would lose the cleaners, the cooks, and the creatures that basically keep the school running. All but one of the house elves actually stop cleaning the Gryffindor common room because of Hermione's clothes, but Dobby picks them up every night and is now the only one that cleans it. But because her clothes are gone every morning, Hermione thinks that she freed all of these house elves and screwed the school over, and she's proud of it. Hermione's a smart girl, smarter than average. She should know that the whole SPEW thing is a dumb idea, and even more, she should be able to see that house elves enjoy working and don't want to be set free. There are some other very cringy things in this book, like the Weasley is our King song, the song that Malfoy made up to throw Ron off during Quidditch matches. And though I liked the way the Gryffindors turned it around, it was something that I never really liked, and was one of the reasons why I was glad that they cut Quidditch from this film. I just found the whole thing sort of ridiculous, and honestly, just straight up cruel. And how the professors don't step in to put a stop to this is beyond me. Another thing I didn't like was Harry literally attacking and punching Malfoy after a Quidditch match. Malfoy was just doing what he was always doing. He was bullying and pushing Harry's buttons by any means necessary. And this time around, he was talking about his mother, something that he's done so many times. But here, Rowling has Harry go out of character and not just hit Malfoy once, but hit him many, many times. And he hit him so hard that he bruised his knuckles on Malfoy's jaw. Me personally, and it's fine if you disagree with me, because as I said, everyone views these books differently, but I think this is very out of character. Why is it that this is what makes Harry snap? A line that is not even close to the worst thing Malfoy has said about him or his parents. We know for sure that this wasn't Voldemort's influence on his anger the way it was a bunch of other times in this book, but it was just Harry and Harry alone. I can see Harry making a move at Malfoy, which I actually praised in the film with Ron holding him back, but it's clear that at the most, he would have hit him once the way Hermione did in the third book. But in the fifth book, this is on another level of brutality that I don't like to see from our main hero. I feel that like the Weasley is our king song, it just promotes bullying and violence, something that the series is pretty good at avoiding for the most part, sticking to magical fights. There are a few moments here and there, but in those fights, it's Mr. Weasley just pushing Mr. Malfoy with no hitting, or it's Neville standing up to his bullies who physically torment him pretty often, but it's never vicious fighting the way we see it here. And again, you might completely disagree with me, this specific critique is pretty opinionated, and ironically, is probably going to be the most controversial topic I discuss in this video. Moving on to something else that I think is just beyond awful in this book is Cho Chang. In The Goblet of Fire, she was a good solid character that was likable to readers, but in The Order of the Phoenix, you just hate her. She's crying all the time, she's back and forth with her feelings for Harry, and of course she has reason to be after losing her boyfriend Cedric. But she goes on to try and use Harry to help her through her grief, and then gets mad at him when he can't do it, which every time I read this just always made me so mad. This is especially true when the two go on their Valentine's date, where on top of talking and crying about Cedric, she tells Harry that she was asked out by Roger Davies, who was sitting right next to them kissing another girl, and she eventually gets up, yells at Harry, then walks out, leaving Harry there highly embarrassed. There's just so much relationship drama in this book that I personally am not a fan of. They're friends, then they're dating, then they get into a fight, then Cho apologizes to Harry, then they have another fight, and then Cho ends up with Ginny's ex-boyfriend. And through it all, Cho does nothing but cry. 
When I made my video about her, a lot of you agreed with me in the comments, making fun of her crying, saying that she was too much, this and that, and it's clear that it's not just me that feels this way, but many other people as well. Joe and all of the relationship drama was just too much for me, especially when it's badly written. But again, that's just my opinion. Some of you might like the relationship. For me though, putting what I think to be the poorly written Harry and Cho's relationship side by side with the very well written Harry and Ginny arc, it's clear that the 5th book lacked a charm that the 6th book captured so well with that love story. Anyway, I saved the biggest complaint I have about this book for last, and that is the final battle in the Department of Mysteries. Now I'm not gonna lie, my view of this sequence was heavily altered by the movie, which might not be fair when judging the book, but that's just how it is for me, I'm not gonna lie about that. In the film, I love the unity that the kids had. They're together for the whole battle fighting side by side, Harry's forced to give up the prophecy to save all of his friends, and then his friends return the favor, coming in just in time to save Harry, reminding him of the love inside of him, which in turn made Voldemort let Harry go. The sequence isn't too long, it's exciting, it's mysterious, and it's heartbreaking, but for me, the book did not deliver on any of these fronts. I think it's very long and it's very drawn out. Leading to the battle alone just took so long, and when we finally did get to the Department of Mysteries, I was so pumped and ready for a fight, but we still had a long way to go until we got to that fight. They find themselves in the circular room and have to figure out which door is the right one. It's almost like the mission in the first book where they had to get through those obstacles to make it to the stone, but here it doesn't work like that. In the first book, each one of them had to step up and do what they were good at, but here they're just guessing which door it is and not doing anything special. The sequence takes so long. They end up going to the circular room, make their way to the brain room, then back to the circular room, then to the death chamber, back to the circular room, then to the time room, and then to the hall of prophecy. That's a lot of things to delay the action the audience has been waiting for for the last three and a half chapters. This is another example of bad pacing in this book, and it drains the excitement the audience was feeling, and for me, this just left me frustrated. Sure, it was cool to get a tour through the Department of Mysteries, but this was not the time to do it. It takes away from the excitement of the climax. Also, the Department of Mysteries doesn't really pay off. We don't see it again for the rest of the series, and it might make some good lore. I even made an entire 13 minute video on it, but ultimately, the only thing this really added was having the time turners be destroyed, Rowling saying that they left too many plot holes. But then she made the cursed child canon, and made the time turners come back, so the one thing it added to the story is now irrelevant. But I'm not gonna talk about the cursed child, because you all know how I feel about that book. There were also some weird moments in the sequence that I felt didn't feel like Harry Potter. And again, this is just my view on the book. You can disagree with me. But the Death Eater with the baby head walking around like a zombie just felt like something that didn't belong in a Harry Potter book. And the same goes for Ron being so loopy that he calls a vicious brain toward him and gets wrapped up by its tentacles. Sure, this is entertaining, but this isn't the action I wanted, especially when I'm so eager for the climax and I've been waiting three and a half, or at this point, four and a half chapters for it. As I said, in the movie, they kept the kids together and showed unity, and that was arguably the best part of the sequence for me. But in the book, they split the kids up, and they have no unity whatsoever. The six start off together, but then Harry, Hermione, and Neville split up from the other three, and it eventually comes down to just Harry and the Death Eaters when Lucius asks for the prophecy. In the movie, Harry handed it over to save his friends who were all around him in terrible danger, but in the book, his friends were all left behind. And sure, Neville eventually comes back and pretty much screws everything up, breaking the prophecy and making it impossible for Harry to get him out of there because he was hit by a curse that made his feet dance non-stop. I feel as though the book doesn't carry the same sense of danger, excitement, and camaraderie that the film did. And now that I've been spoiled by the film, I can never see the book the same again, because the film outdid it by so much. Overall, I love this book. For every bad thing that I pointed out, there are three good things. I literally made a whole video on how this book encases the most important conversation in the Harry Potter series, and I can't praise it enough. But this video was about the flaws I saw in the book, and was my argument on why I believe this was the weakest of the seven in the series. I'm sure many of you will disagree, and I'm sure many of you will agree, but I gave my argument and gave my points on why I feel the way I do. That felt good. Not good. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured in the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe. And look out for more great videos on the way.